Yo, what's up guys? It's the Nightwing at Way of Life Esports coming at you guys with another League of Legends video here today. So, TSM and Drama are just an iconic duo because it just seems to follow them. Now, I'm going to show you a series of tweets that'll bridge this to a different conversation. I am joined here by a uh, Mr. Buff Studman guy. So, how are you doing, sir? I'm doing pretty good. So, what have you you been doing in the off season? Uh... <laughs> You're I've been noticing the stuff going on, but for the most part, there's not really been anything interesting. The South oh, Alpha is the most interesting. Oh, but. this will be interesting after I got all, all of this stuff together. So, Lena posted on her Twitter page, since I follow mostly all these people who are not, like, boring. She says, it's honestly harder to import players when the U.S. is in the state. Can you imagine how parents feel when their young adult son wants to move to the U.S. to play pro LOL and they're searching COVID, political unrest, etc.? I really hope we can come together as a country and do better. So, what do you think she means by by this tweet? Does she just mean just America in general, or is she talking about TSM? She's obviously talking about America in general. It's literally, it's obvious just purely from the statement. It's a political statement. And if you look at the next conversation she has right there, mm -hmm. it's based on the fact that she's talking about how the country is poorly handling the coronavirus stuff. And, I mean, that's just on her at this point in time. Okay. Like, I think. Hmm. That makes sense. That's what I got, too. I didn't really think she meant TSM. But, I mean, she is TSM's president, so it could go hand in hand. I mean, it could be a thing. But, so, okay, you're on the side that she's talking about America. Okay, so in the next series of tweets, uh, this conversation came out later today, guys, where she tweeted again. It was about six hours ago, actually. This was really recent. I've been commenting about U.S. politics because of the election recently, and my vague tweet isn't even about us, just how politics affect uh, different areas of life. And I went to check out the drama today, and I don't even know who this guy is. So he, I don't even know who this is either. I, I think he's going to be working uh, with Immortals, obviously, because he has an Immortals, you know, flair and his background on Twitter. Captain Flower says, I got blocked too. And then I, uh, Azale says, wait, I'm blocked too. So that's kind of weird how this guy blocked Lena, Captain Flowers, and uh, Azale. But time to leak his conversation. So his conversation is right here. So uh, the person above him says, yo, congrats on the promo promotion, Chief. And then this guy, Paul, says, Lena has lied about why TSM is having uh, trouble importing, by the way. That org has burnt so many bridges with talent that is now affecting them. I'll be very open and say in zero talk with a single EU player did any state fear of COVID, public unrest, etc. stopping them from deciding. Uh, Lena lying that this is a reason or tears uh, or fears of visas because Riot is working with the U.S. government on visas. TSM is fucked due to their own shitty behavior in the past finally catching up to them. Feel free to tweet most of this. Holy shit, he does. God damn. I mean, he didn't destroy her. All of this, like a lot of this, he's, he's not wrong. A lot of the people that aren't going to TSM aren't doing it because of the coronavirus stuff. It's not that... That's not why they're choosing not to go to there. Mm -hmm. Lena is mismanaging the whole system for the most part. I think she's doing a very poor job as one of the chief people in charge of getting drafts over here. I mean, mm -hmm. a lot of her stuff, getting rid of Kabe after a pretty okay start. And, and on top of the fact that Kabe was doing better than double it, getting rid of him for double it because there was a lot more into it. She had a lot more emotional investment inside of double it. There's a lot of childish behavior going behind the scenes of TSM. And that's why no one wants to go there. I mean, so it's just on her. The, I mean, you really can't blame anybody else. The person replies to Paul and says, wow, that's heavy and makes a lot of sense. Lines up with info. I heard about them just getting denied by this almost is... all the talent they offered. And then he says, correct. So let's... Well, I mean, yeah, I'm just saying, like, why did she tweet the, the DMs, though? What? Uh, weird. It's weird. I've never them. seen I mean, that in my life. People would say to, like, expose something. But to be fair, Lena said, I because I remember I follow her on Twitch and sometimes I watch her streams. She did say it was super hard to get people, though. Like, she's she's kind of well, already Lena's... used to that a, a, long, a while ago. It was the last year when they tried to get Vulcan and Licorice because they tried to get Vulcan and Licorice, too. Uh, they try to get liquors from Cloud9, and they were in the bid to get Vulcan as well. They don't have a good coaching staff. Like, 100%, why would good teams want to go over there when they don't know how to properly man? Like, Vulcan would be 
probably out of his way of the league if he went over to TSM because he would have been so mismanaged over there. Would have been out of his way. We wouldn't know him as one of the best up and coming supports. But she wasn't talking like, about TSM. She was just talking about the. the yeah, US. I understand yeah. that. But what she's saying is what she's saying, and the reason what uh, Paul is saying over here is the fact that he's she's saying that she's struggling to get people to come over mm -hmm. because of the fact that coronavirus is making them all reluctant, where so as Paul is saying, that's not why they're coming over here. You're just a trash owner. <laughs> and honestly, is he really... I don't know if he's wrong. Like he's I, I don't know enough about Lena's behind-the-scenes stuff, but again, I don't it all comes wrong. down to... I, I don't think I, he's wrong. She's alluded to that before. They, they, they've had issues with getting people before. No, I'm just saying, like, who who is to say what the real reason as to why they're struggling? Like, it, it, coaching staff has not been... They have not addressed the fundamental flaws inside of their their organization for years and a lot of people are already uh, able to understand that like i have no problems with lena as a person maybe i really don't care that much i really think she should have kept the dardock stuff she's she's letting double lift have too much power is what it is she's giving double lift a lot uh, just a little too much say he's getting to come back on the team tsm because she wanted him back on and all that stuff like all around like i think i can understand where he's coming from but uh I really, I really don't know why he tweeted the DMs. Like, it just feels like that's not what you're supposed to do in that situation. You're supposed to mention there was people like it, it, the reason, the fact that he blocked everybody in the scene is just crazy to me, right? Like, like why, that just wait, makes me feel like Captain that's not Flowers? what he was. Like why, why would he block Captain Flowers in his? He just was not expecting the DMs themselves to get leaked. I think, and the guy who did it apparently didn't understand me like when people say that kind of stuff you say there's been talk behind the scenes of owners saying that tsm struggling because of this mm -hmm. not about specifically leaking the dms <laughs> like exactly like that's just it's weird to me that was weirdly unprofessional who is the, who was that guy that leaked that um it wasn't paul i know that it no was... paul said it but who who's the one that tweeted that uh, he, he see he covered up the name about the guy. He covered up his name, but not Paul's. Oh Lord! <laughs> no, uh, somebody tweeted that picture. <laughs> Who tweeted that picture? I don't know, honestly. You literally just found that somewhere in the world. Where was Hold it? Hold on. Um, let's see. Uh, okay, so oh, it's him right vet there. Veteran. It's, oh, it's veteran. No, there's no way. Cause he it retweeted. is veteran. I are you sure? Yeah, you can unless he's like. It says, no, he's just what's it he's just quoting over the tweet though. That's yeah, but he found the tweet somewhere also. And maybe he didn't say it. I'm just saying. Oh, Reddit. Let me look up Reddit really quick. I'm pretty sure it, it, it has to be on Reddit. League of Legends. Justice League Rebirth. There we go. I read comic books. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I read. You don't have to type League of Legends Reddit. What is what a psychopath? Psychopath. You mean sexy buff man, right? All right. So. You wanted that tweet. Where, where, where did he get it from? Blah, blah, blah. It is veteran. Well, he said it says veteran on Paul Desi's. The Desi is the person. It's literally veteran that tweeted this. I don't know why you're so reluctant to say that. I guess you're right. I, I mean, I'm, I'm not saying he didn't do it, nor he did. I'm just saying I, I don't know, honestly. It because because it, it says what's here's here's what actually no 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 you're right you're right it's not veteran that said that I'm a genius okay, I don't know who did it it really doesn't matter to me you probably should have looked this up before you started you should also get rid of your little email in the top right oh oh uh, they can't see that my well, my webcam is in the place of that honestly okay dude uh, like all around I, I, I don't know what don't the actual reason is because you want me all to yourself is that the reason I why? don't. Okay. I'm just saying, like, I don't really know what the reasoning behind it is. Like, I don't know if he really has any proof, because if he's coming out here just swinging left and right, he has really nothing to go off of. And this is just hearsay on his part. He's, he's just saying, but if we based at, off um, what he thinks is true, this is useless information that he should have kept himself. If we look at TSM's track record, though, they literally... Yeah, but you can't base it off track record, because you they, that's to. not... You kind of can. You literally, you literally can't, because I mean, there's no actual proof behind that. That's literally just him saying it because that's what he thinks is going on. That's like me saying something like, I really think that Darduck has always been in the right and all these people because that's what I think his personality is like. I have no proof to go off that. That's just what I interpret. And there's genuinely no proof to what he's saying. I think it might be true, but I don't know that. Like, he shouldn't... I would if say, if like, he genuinely not, had proof, that makes sense. It's not 100% true, but there's some truth to it, if that makes sense. There's not. I mean, honestly, I, I don't know. I'm not going to... There, there's people refuting what he's saying saying there's nothing to what he's saying and honestly i'm gonna say lena right now lena right now is in a bad shape she's shown a really bad a poor decision making a lot of her 
like in, in a lot of the things she's done recently with all the Darduck stuff, with the double of stuff and the Kabe, mm -hmm. all that stuff that she's done recently has shown really poor managerial like like expert like her, her experience in that terms. Like I, I think she'll get better in the future. It's a little a lot of just silly mistakes she made right now. Yeah. But I can understand what he's saying, but at the same time, if he's saying this because he heard from EU players that they're not coming because of that. Maybe they aren't coming because of that. They, maybe they are really not coming because they well, COVID fair, stuff. You got to factor. And he heard from one person well, that you, they are. You got to kind of factor this in. They had Sven, Mithy, Yellow Star. All those players okay. had something in common. They're all prominent, uh, you know, le quote unquote legendary EU players. So I mean, like, if if you're talking just on the fact of them speaking to other players about them having aspirations to come to TSM, then obviously they're gonna ask Sven. Yellow Star, Mithy, all the other EU players. We have amazing. no idea if he did any of that, though. We we're talking, this is literally the statement he made yeah. was indirect. Like, he was literally talking directly to these past two years, saying that the reason that they can't get all these EU players to come over is because of all this stuff. And that's just the reality of what he's trying to say right now. If he doesn't have proof, which Veteran is trying to say that he doesn't have, then really, I'm yeah, not sure what we go off of. basically causing a bunch of, like, drama for no unnecessary reason. I don't know. I mean, I, I think the person posting the DMs was kind of crazy. I mean, I don't know why you do that. But uh, I really don't know. It makes moderate sense. It does it does kind of make sense in my mind as to why somebody would do this. But um, <gasps> All right. as to why it makes, like, as to why uh, that would be the pick case, mm -hmm. like, of TSM not being able to get uh, imports. Because they did mismanage a lot of stuff. It's, it's a fact they have not fixed addressed a lot of their underlying issues on their teams. So I don't know. It it could possibly what's it called make sense and maybe he does have insider information, but I'm not going to say it's a fact. I'm just not going to go off of this is 100% what happened because a lot of people are too willing to jump on that train. That's true. And then you also have this other other guy, Scuff Skeleton. He says, I think because he, he was replying to all these uh, situations that were going on. He says, "Let me be clear. I'm not saying TSM staff is the issue." I'm saying it comes from the top, and then he replies. This man, why are we giving him a voice? Who is he? Oh, uh, he had um, rumored uh, TSM uh, off-season um, rosters in the past, and he'd been right on them. So I mean, it's kind of some leeway there. But he also says, "I'm not taking away from TSM and their other esports, the Siege team, the Smash team, the Valorant team, the and the Fortnite team are all solid. TSM from." Uh, and wait, are all solid from TSM, and TSM is going in the right direction with them. The LOL side of things needs to change. It's true. I mean, honestly, it seems like a lot of their other teams are doing pretty well. We have TSM left and then all that stuff. They're picking up pretty decent they're teams, but again, there's no, yeah, they're, a lot. They're actually pretty. Their public yeah. their public perception is not bad in other games. People actually like them in other games. Yeah, but the problem with that is the fact that there's genuinely, when it comes to Smash, there's not a lot of organization. You just pick a good player and they do stuff for you. You really don't have to do much in terms of Smash and all that yeah, stuff. Yeah, you really don't. <laughs> you don't. Like, you just get a good player, sign them for money, and you have a, you have a team wins, now. He wins you two That's just what that's it is. It. That's you all it is. play with each other. Like, with, with LOL, there's a lot more complexities to it. Like, uh, mm -hmm. like, trying to get a team that functions well, and there's a lot more to go to a game than just pure mechanics. It's all emotionally based and chemistry and all that stuff that you're not going to be able to make work unless you get a team that actually likes each other you have to get a team that not only likes each other but you need to get a, a, a man like a managing staff that knows what they're talking about and they don't have that like it just like i don't know how they have such a terrible like like idea of how the game should be played every single year they have literally not changed in the past okay, few years they've so made do you want to know what i was going to say to you before we go to this Last part of the video, which was, uh, you know, I will dominate said they wanted to kick Broken Blade back in 2019 because Broken Blade was like one of the best players on that team because they thought this is what he said. So basically, I'm kind of paraphrasing here. They thought he would never learn how to uh, play split pushing uh, really well, and he didn't do certain things in the top lane that were really good in the meta at that current point in time. So they wanted to get rid of him in 2019. They just didn't really have another option. That was the thing, and they thought that he could improve on it, but now they obviously want to go to somewhere, uh, move on to someone else because, you know, there's rumors about, you know, TSM, Licorice, Impact, Flame, all these uh, uh, other players. Um, <laughs> Flame? Yeah. You're going to replace Broken Blade with Flame? That's not, that's, that's not a bad... It is um, a very bad one. Broken Blade... Flame was decent when he was here, but he literally was not as good as Broken Blade is now in any recent time. 
Like it's just a fact. He's not as good as Broken Blade is as it stands. When he went over to I mean Korea, he did pretty decent on tanks, but for the most part, he doesn't bring that secondary carry style that they're actually looking for. They're gonna get another low econ top laner that I think Flame is actually substituting himself into. And honestly, maybe Flame is able to bounce back to what I think, even on his immortals days, it would be fine if you had him on the team. But I don't think we're gonna get that. Like, well, it's the same level. thing that you learn about Bwipo. It's like, why would Hunter Thieves want to get Bwipo after 20? I mean, I, I, I can see, I understand why they would. He had just finished in the World 2018 Championship Finals. But you had someday, someday was the MV, like him and Licorice were like MVP candidates. Why would you, well, if they had the other MVP candidate. Even if some, the thing about it is, just think about it. Like, even if he is better, that's like replacing, like, if you have the choice between Kevin Durant, uh, and LeBron James. no, no, no. If you're if you're playing a team and you have the ability to get uh, replace, yeah. But let's think about it. like Kevin Durant with Kawhi Leonard or Kawhi Leonard with Kevin Durant. Either way around, mm -hmm. like if you have the ability to do that, but the rest of your team is trash, you're only upgrading a piece that literally straight up they're the same position. You're upgrading that piece, but the rest of your team is still trash. So you've not really addressed the rest of the problems. Getting Whippo is just the most ridiculous problem. <laughs> like address like thing that you possibly could have done for that team so before we move on to, onto this one what did you think about the whole c9 perk situation i think that's incredible for cloud nine i'm really excited it's like, like christmas. they're gonna look really good that's like christmas for me two of my favorite teams literally trading players i i thought that sounds not strange. trading players they're just getting a player <laughs> no because that brings more validity to that rumor that niski could be going to golden guardians because if you're you're niski seeing like people gotta understand please players see this stuff they literally see this stuff so he's probably thinking like man they're actually trying to replace me i probably might want to go to another team or talk to some other other, other teams it's not that he doesn't see this. They're probably telling him everything that's going on. Well, because they all, what also have happened today was Cody Sun is now a, a free agent, and Power of a Evil is now a free agent as well. I'm glad Cody. Like I still don't like Cody Sun that much. <laughs> I don't know. He's just he's just a worse version of actually like Kabe and stuff. Like he really just is a really like he's he's moderately low econ, but he really ramps up in the later half of the game. He really provides nothing in the early game, so you really can't have early game skirmishes with him. Because he has no ability to win a lane. Like, Cody Sun was one of the most... Like, honestly, as much as he's not, like, considered a superstar, he's still overrated for how much people value him. Sources like, he just... Gen at Immortals to sign former Adastralis LL jungler Xerxes for the 2021... We already LCS talked about this one. So, well, so, like, there was a person... There was a couple people that, that got mad when we were talking about Xerxes is the same jungler as Xmithy. So... For people who have low IQs and people who have Don't no brains, say that. Um, no need. Xerxe, what I said when Xerxe and Xmenti are the same player, I meant that, and I'm I, I don't mean they're the same dude. Uh, if you really you really got to go back to school to, to you know obviously understand comprehension. No reason to insult people like but that, dude. Xerxe does not fix Immortals' issues because Xerxe, if you look at how Xerxe plays and you look at how Xmenti plays with their name plates off, they play the same. They path the same. They play on the same lanes. They play off objective timers the same way they do everything the same getting him does not fix their issues it just doesn't i i don't know what was so hard to understand about that it, it literally does not fix their issues well you're you're literally attacking what would i would say is one of the more fan favorite characters trying to just be a little too aggressive when it comes to that like you don't have to say all these over the top man this guy is like literally just barely better than Smithy because he is a step up from Smithy. i mean not a very drastic a one but he is a it's not a side grade. It's definitely still an upgrade. I just don't think it's worth an imports a lot. He's going to give I you the exact that, same play style, though. Essentially. It's not. Okay, hold on. Hold on. I mean, he plays the play style a lot more aggressive. He's still a substantially more aggressive than Xmithy. Let's not, let's not say that. I mean, he does. He has a lot more ganks. He has a lot more proximity to his lanes. Like, he, de he definitely has a lot less farming tendencies than Xmithy does. I mean, Xmithy is more. Uh, objective oriented, which I wouldn't say. Ex I mean, Xerxes is not, but again, I think that Xerxes does focus on ganks more often than Xmithy does. Like there, there are some differences between the play styles. I think that Xmithy is just again. I would keep Xmithy. The, the 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 upgrade's not substantial enough for me to say that this is worth an import slot. But at the same time, they made a step. I mean, whatever. If you really think this is the move, if you're trying to win now, maybe getting a slightly better jungler is the way to go. I don't know. Let's try Kim. Who's oh who's Life? Oh, I know who Life is. Life is the support from uh. Oh, uh, is that Hanawa Life? No, that's Layhan. No, Life is one of the big time supports. He's from uh. 
He's not good, but he's from a God. I can't remember their name. It's a top team. So the, uh, I'm not saying these people are credible, but the, the only other rumor about TSM has supposedly chosen their top laner and support for the 2021 season. Apparently, they want to create an environment suitable for a Korean player, according to sources. I wonder what kind of impact this idea will have on the roster. Oh yeah, because that's not given away. I mean, I like if it. So there's a, a lot of top laners on the table for TSM. You have Impact. Uh, you have Licorice. You also have uh, their Academy player. So there's options for TSM. I just don't know, like, if top lane should be their main focal point. Their main focal point should be mid lane. I'm pretty sure, right? You think the main idea for TSM should be, if, if they're, they consider, like, obviously they've made steps to try and at least contact perks. They made steps to try and contact all these people. So I won't say anything about them not attempting to address the main issue. But at the same time... Like, I think that their biggest issue, obviously, first off, is the fact that I think even though Spicket played pretty well, his ceiling is not very high. I would not oh, consider man. keeping him if you want to play on the international stage. Mm -hmm. uh, their bot lane struggled the most out of everybody, though, so both of them need to go. I think both of them were atrocious this year. I mean, I think that the value on Spicket has been a little too high in the, the, the eyes of everybody right now, and I feel like that's just kind of crazy to me. I mean, he looked pretty good on set, but anything besides set, he's been very mediocre on. It's been a, a very underwhelming in terms of that. They started banning it against him in Worlds, and he became irrelevant. Like, his Kindred's not that good. His ability to play hyper-aggressive junglers is terrible. They started letting him have Nidalee because he's worthless on it. Like, I think that Spica, again, he played better than a lot of people on TSM, but at the very least, being the best player on an 0-6 team is not... Not even the best player, but one of the better players on an 0 16 is not the most impressive thing. Man, Thorin, it's like saying Thorin was Thorin said that he was the best player on TSM at Worlds. I was like, no, not even close. I mean, it's it's definitely it's 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 between him and Broken Blade. Yeah, because I think there's in, without the, a doubt. In, in the context of who he had to play against, like Clid, Self Made, and Peanut. I mean, I don't he, put context like that in. I mean, I'm just saying. I mean, he, he like performed all, better than expectations given who. So, he so had the thing about it is the reason why you don't compare junglers like that is because of the fact that when it comes to lanes, you. Don't directly have to counteractively play against them. If you're losing in a jungle matchup, it's not directly affecting you unless they're counter jungling. So you're not going to get put behind by that. You're just going to have the rest of your team put behind. That's why you don't directly compare junglers like that. The reason that if you have a top laner and you do pretty decently against a good top laner, you put in context the competition they had to go against because they directly had to classic against them and try and get CS while consistently laning against them. People are giving Spicka a lot of credit because of his competition, when in reality, his competition expediated the pace of the game. He was left behind a little bit in terms of that, but he was able to get a few plays around the map every once in a while. His Lily Asleep was decent. All of his set games, I'm like, I mean, all of his good I mean, games on set during the playoffs and all that stuff were good in terms of just like when he played against uh, FlyQuest in the playoffs, but I, I don't want to give him too much credit. Like, he is, he did play, he took a significant step up. But he is not a superstar, and he's just not to that level yet. He's not that good. He's making steps to be a good player, though. And people need to calm down with that. He's not a building block for a team because he's just genuinely not that good. Like, I, I don't get it. I don't know where this, this fat, like, fetish for him has come from. Like, it's just ridiculous to me. Like, I, I gave him credit during the FlyQuest series, and then all of a sudden people are saying he's the... He's the cornerstone of TSM, and they need to build around him. Like, what? What is this? I mean, that's not a that's not the most outlandish possibility now that Bjergsen has retired, though. I mean, he's still not more valuable than Broken Blade, and they got rid of him. I mean, it, really, no one's worth keeping on that team at this point. If you're getting rid of Bo Broken Blade, who I think has a lot of high potential, you need to get rid of everybody. No one on this team is good. Not a single person on this team left is good. The bot lane was trash. The jungler is mediocre. He's never going to be international. Like, what, who's worth it? Make a whole revamp for the entire team and try and build around that. He's somebody I think is going to have potential in the future, maybe. Mm -hmm. But it's going to be in the far future. Like, I still think he's not got to that level. If he makes very drastic changes, very, like, big leaps in terms of next year, I will take, I'll change my mind on it. I'll take it back. But I just don't see that happening anytime soon. All right, that's pretty much it. Uh, see you guys later. Y is there anything else you want to say? No, I mean, I don't even know what this video is about, to be honest. I just talked. That's good. That's good. What do you think about um, ESPN Esports kind of shutting down? Why did they shut down? All the all the, all the uh, all of the contracts were up, and they didn't. Uh, ESPN chose not to renew them, actually. But Jacob Wolves was actually up. He just had another opportunity to go somewhere else.
you know. Where did he go to? He hasn't revealed yet, so that's okay, kind we'll of the see. thing. Maybe he goes to Travis Gafford and he gets a lot more insight there. Holy crap, that'd be insane. See you guys later. Uh, like, comment, subscribe. Oh my goodness, Dignitas. There's a big possibility Sneaky joins Dignitas. <laughs> that's not bad. It's it not, is bad. I mean, in, in terms of like, no, because like Johnson wasn't bad though. I, 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 I think you keep Johnson, but you know he. It's might not wanna... bad. He was like considerably by the end of the season the best ADC. Hmm. Like by the end of the implode of Sven, I think he was probably the best ADC in NA. I think I don't even know why you would even get another ADC to play instead of him. Like, but if he Tactical wants, is getting yeah. a lot of credit, but Tactical is not better than Johnson. I don't I mean, know about that. I, I, I guaranteed it's never been like get yeah, Johnson. It's not even. I, don't, I genuinely don't even think it's close between the two. I think that Johnson is a league above Tactical. I think Tactical made steps and he played really well at Worlds, but he doesn't have the same potential that Johnson does. Johnson lanes a lot better. Johnson's a better team five. Johnson's all around just a better player. He's smarter than him. Like, like I'm not trying to go like crazy on that. I do think that Tactical has a lot of potential, so he could pass him up in the next year. But as it stands right now, I think that Johnson is the all around better player. You know what the, the right step that... the Tactical is to outbeat Johnson going to Worlds. What's up? <laughs> he already went to Worlds though. That's going to be a pretty big jump for Tactical uh, coming into. But you, you, you really just gave credit to purely tactical when the best player on the team is the support. It's obviously he's going to look a lot better when the single best player in the all of the West, in my opinion, is in your lane with you. Well, I was glad because we did not. Well, oh, we you didn't get flamed. Well, I no, we didn't get flamed for having Core JJ in our uh, Worlds 2020 for a uh, second place All Pro team. I would have, like, honestly, if Barrel wasn't so good, I might have put him first, but Barrel was a monster, bro. Barrel was an animal. Well, like, you also had, um, who else was there? We had, there was Hill saying Mickey X, Core JJ. Those were, like, the other, uh, uh, other options. They're all Western players, which is weird. Outside of Barrel. I mean, I would have put Sword Art in third. I did put Sword Art in third. I, we didn't have enough players for a third team. <laughs> Does it have been I mean, I players? <laughs> I started putting players in there. You just kind of ended it. Oh my god. But we'll see you guys later. Like, comment, subscribe, most of all, enjoy. I'm the Nightwing. Way of Life Esports is signing out, guys. Peace. Have a good day. Yo, it's the Nightwing. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video that you guys just watched. And if you did enjoy it, make sure you leave a like and a comment down below. And if you never want to miss out on a single upload, make sure you hit the notification bell. That way you get notified whenever I post a video. Thank you guys for the continued support. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.